the Joides Resolution is a, a drilling ship, a drilling vessel that's designed to uh, drill into the seafloor and collect uh, research samples to be used to understand Earth's history and Earth's tectonic environments. Um, it's funded by the National Science Foundation and an international consortium. So we're here uh, three kilometers above the, the Hikarangi Trough offshore the east coast of the North Island of New Zealand. The Hikarangi subduction zone is New Zealand's largest plate boundary fault and it's where the Pacific plate is diving down beneath the eastern part of the North Island offshore the east coast. In the lower North Island the two plates appear to be stuck together due to friction along the fault they're unable to slip past each other and so we're storing a lot of stress that eventually one day will be relieved in a future earthquake. And we're here to do two things. One is to collect samples of the rock and sediment to understand the properties of the rock and the conditions, the temperature and the pressure and things like that in the region where slow slip earthquakes occur. And what a slow slip event is, is it's very similar to an earthquake and that it involves really more rapid than normal movement along a fault line between two pieces of the Earth's crust. Except in an earthquake, that movement, you can get meters in a matter of seconds, so you get that sudden seismic energy release and shaking. But these slow slip events occur more slowly over a period of weeks to months. And the second reason we're here is also related to that, to try to understand these slow earthquakes, is to uh, install monitoring equipment that will collect data over a roughly five-year period uh, from now until 2022 or 2023 uh, to understand over time what happens as stresses and strains build up and then are released over the course of um, what we call the slow slip cycle. This expedition is the first IODP science expedition ever to study the concept of slow slip on subduction faults. And North Hikarangi is such a special place to be able to do this because we have slow slip events that are occurring on the fault very close to the trench, very close to the capabilities that we can collect data from IODP that can contribute to us understanding that. So yeah, so at two of these sites, uh, the site in the fault zone and then the borehole that's in the, the upper plate, the rock above the sort of heart of the, the, the center of the slow slip source region. In those two boreholes we're going to be installing a series of instruments that are designed to monitor the, the pressure of fluids. And so we're going to monitor that pressure over time. Um, we're going to take a measurement every 30 seconds. And that's going to be recorded on essentially a hard drive, a disk drive that's waterproofed, pressure proofed, and sits at the wellhead three kilometers below sea level. So one of the biggest questions facing seismologists today is trying to understand what is this relationship between slow slip events and earthquakes. We've seen in some examples um, like the Akike earthquake in 2014 and the Tohoku earthquake in 2011 that large subduction zone earthquakes um, were actually preceded by slow slip events. So our, our goal with this entire expedition is to understand more about why slow earthquakes or slow slip events occur. What is it about the rocks or about the conditions in the earth that allow these events to arise. And ultimately, the long-term objective and the thing that I hope comes out of this expedition is that we'll gain some new understanding, some new insight into the causes of these slow earthquakes. And that, in turn, will illuminate something about these fault zones and why sometimes they fail or they slide in ways that are relatively peaceful, whereas in other places, like the Tohoku earthquake of 2011, uh, they fail or slide in much more catastrophic ways. Some of the observatory data, particularly the pressure being measured at the seafloor, will really help to inform tsunami modeling for tsunamis that could potentially impact the east coast of the North Island. For example, if we could link these observatories up to land with a fiber optic cable, we could get that data in in real time. If there was an earthquake at the offshore Hikarangi subduction zone that generated a tsunami, we would know that very quickly, within minutes. The results of this study are really going to help us understand what makes that fault tick and also how slow slip events relate to the possible larger tsunami gen generating earthquakes that can occur on this major plate boundary fault. And at the end of the expedition, we have a gigantic, beautiful data set of all of these different rock properties and ages and everything that tells the story of what the materials are and how they, how they got there, basically. We're going to collect a data set of log, core, and then observatories that are just going to be absolutely world first ever for studying subduction slow slip processes. That's the special thing about this whole science program. In a nutshell.